Hello, today we are solving the 18th question of the LeetCode Advanced SQL 50 list. This is apples and oranges. In this question, they give us one table called sales over here. We have a list of uh, the sales of fruit. Here we have the date, here we have the fruit that was sold, and here we have how many of the fruit were sold on that day. For example, on May 1st, 2020, there were 10 apples sold. On the same day, May 1st, 2020, there were eight oranges sold. And we only have two types of fruits uh, being sold, either apples or oranges. Here we have the next day, for example, uh, May 2nd, the apples and oranges sold, and then the third, the fourth, and so on. What they want us to find is the difference between the number of apples and oranges sold each day. So let's go through an example on what that means. Our first day, May 1st, 2020, we sold 10 apples and 8 oranges. The difference between those quantities is 2. 10 minus 8 is 2, so we're going to return 2 for this day. On the next day, May 2nd, we sold an even amount of both, 15 apples and 15 oranges. So we're going to return 0, right? Because there's no difference between 15 and 15. On our third day, we sold 20 apples and 0 oranges. We're going to return 20 for this day. We sold 20 more apples and oranges. And then on our last day, 2020, May 4th, we sold 15 apples, but 16 oranges. So for the first time, we sold more oranges than apples. But we're going to follow the same formula for counting the difference, where we do the amount of apples sold minus the amount of oranges. So 15 minus 16, the difference is going to be negative one and we will return negative one for that day and this would be our desired output we have each day of sales and the difference between the apples and oranges sold an important thing to notice is that we're dealing with two types of data right we either have apples or oranges and that's all our table contains so a very good first step when you don't know what to do is to try to split this table into two smaller tables where we have all the apples in one table and then all the oranges in another. So here we go. We took all of our rows where the fruit was an apple, which we can do that with a query like select everything from our sales table where the fruit equals apples. And we just get all of our apples in one table. And then in the same way for oranges, we could just select all of our rows from our sales table where fruit equals oranges because these rows are kind of already ordered by sale date it actually becomes very easy to visualize a potential solution right we have our first day apples 10 and then notice that our first row here is also our first day oranges and then eight so we could hypothetically join these two tables together where the sales date matches right we could see hey if it's may 1st in the apples table and may 1st in the oranges table then we want to compare how many were sold of each fruit. We could find the difference and then return that as a result. And we will get how many apples and oranges were served on that day on one line. That's the most important part. We have all of our information on one line and this allows us to find the difference, right? We could say the apples sold amount minus the oranges sold amount for each line in this join table and return that as a result. We couldn't have done that before because for each day, the amount of apples and oranges were on separate lines. And once they're all on the same line, our query would, will just be select the sale date, right? We want the day each item was sold. And then we could do the apples table sold amount, the sold number, right? This column minus the oranges table column, this sold column in the oranges table. And this will give us the difference we're looking for. And that's it. That would be our solution. Let's try implementing this in code and see if we can, uh, first of all, implement this correctly and then see if we can optimize it. So if I wanted to get all the apples from our sales table, I could just filter where that fruit is an apple. Here we go. We just get only the apples from our table. And in the same way, if I wanted oranges, I would have the same query with just filtering for a different fruit. Now, it's important to note that these are not tables. These are queries. What we can do is give them a name so they can act as tables. If I wanted to call this query, what it returns to us are apples table. I could just say apples table and put that whole query here. And in the same way, I could call what this gives us the oranges table. Now, if I say down here, select everything from our apples table, it'll give us this. This will just make it look cleaner and more understandable because I won't have to put this whole query every time we're using the table somewhere. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join these two tables together, the oranges, the oranges table and the apples table. So we're going to select from our apples table, join the oranges table, and we combine them wherever the sale date in both tables was the same. Oranges table, sale date. 
Let's see what this gives us. Now you can see here, we are almost at our solution. We just joined our two tables, right? This was our first table, the apples table. And then this is our oranges table. How many oranges were sold on each day? We want to return the day and then the difference of apples to oranges sold. So instead of selecting everything and returning everything up here, we just want to return the sale date. And then this number, the apple sold, which is apples table dot sold num minus this number of oranges sold and down here our expected result we can see they want us to call this column diff as in the difference so we're gonna rename what we get here to diff and before we do submit it's important to note that there are two sale dates here there's this sale date and this sale date it doesn't matter which which one we use but we still have to specify uh, so SQL knows which one to return. We'll just take the apples one. Look, our solution is accepted. Here is our output and here is the expected result. Let's submit. Yeah, everything works. So this is a uh, good way to approach questions where you're dealing with two types of data specifically, like in this case, apples and oranges. However, for this question, there is an even better solution. Going back to our drawn example, let's remove everything else that we have. Now, remember how for our result, we want to find the difference for each day. So we want uh, the difference for May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd, May 4th, and so on. We want the difference for each of these groups. So what we can do instead of splitting the table and then joining it back together is to use group by on this table. Now, it may seem a little confusing how this is going to work at first, but let me show you. Group by is often used when you want to perform an aggregate function on a SQL table. For example, let's say I wanted to find how many apples and oranges were sold. I would say, give me the sum of the sold number column. But if I just said the sum of the, of this column, it would just add all of these up and return me the total. But using group by, if I said, hey, group by the type of fruit, it would give me the sum of all the apples, 10, 15, 20, and 15. And then it would give me the sum of all the oranges, add it up, and then get, that would be another number. However, in this case, our group by will be used differently. We're going to group by the sale date column. For each of these groups, we're going to sum together, grouped by the sale date instead, right? It, we're going to sum together these two and sum together these two and sum together these two and these two. But this doesn't give us the difference. This will be 18, this will be 30, this will be 20, and this will be 31. What we're going to do now is we're going to say, hey, if this column is an apple, just leave it be. But if in this column, the fruit is an orange, turn this number negative. So see how it's eight here? We want this to be negative eight. Here it's an orange, turn this into a negative 15. Well, zero is just zero. And here it's an orange. It's 16 here. Turn this into a negative 16 because it says orange here. And now... If we do a sum between this number and this number, we're going to get two, the difference. Do the sum between these two, we're going to get zero, the difference. A sum between these two numbers now, 20 and zero, this is the difference. 15 and negative 16, this will be our difference, negative one. And this will give us the difference we're looking for. So I know it may seem confusing at first. Hopefully as we go into code, it'll make more sense. But essentially what we're doing is we're just adding up, summing together, the number of items sold for each day. That's why we're grouping by the sale date. But for each sold amount, if it's an orange, turn it negative so that we subtract it from the amount of apples. So we have 10 apples. And instead of adding the amount of oranges, like how some usually operates, right? It just adds everything together. We're going to add the negative of that number, which is just subtracting. And we're going to get our difference. So let's try this new approach in code. Remember, first we want to select the sale date. That's one of the things we want to return. May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd. And we're going to add up the number of uh, fruits sold. This is all from our sales table for each date. So we're grouping by the sale date. Now, remember, we're adding them up together. This is why we have the wrong numbers here. What we're going to do now is include a conditional that's going to say, hey, if the fruit is an orange, change this sold number to a negative. So we're going to need to implement a conditional. We're going to say the case when fruit equals oranges, then we want sold to be a negative. So we're going to multiply it by negative one. Otherwise, it's an apple and we don't touch it. We're just going to say the sold number and then we end our case. What we're going to do now is put this case condition into here instead of sold number. So instead of just summing up the number of items sold for each day, so 10 and 8, 15 and 15, 20 and 0, we're going to sum together the same things, 10 and 8, 15 and 15. But if the fruit is an oranges, it's going to take the number of items sold and multiply it by negative one, making it negative. So in this case, oranges, 
the sold number will turn into negative eight. Then it'll sum up the 10 and the negative eight and give us a difference of two. Let's see what we get. Perfect. I mean, let's just rename this uh, column to difference. So let's call this, uh, this column diff, just like they asked and then submit. There we go. Our solution is accepted. We have what we got here and our expected output. It's the exact same. Uh, the question also randomly mentions that we should order by the sale date. It's not going to affect the solution because our input table was already ordered by sale date, but I'll just add it in for consistency sake. Let's submit. Perfect. Our solution runs. And that's it. This approach of summing together the number of fruits sold for each day, but making it a negative if it's an orange so that we can find the difference and doing that for each day. That's why we're grouping by the sale date. It's much cleaner and much quicker to implement. And that's everything. Thank you for watching.